All right, guys, considering we're around the corner from what might be one of the biggest fights of the year, it's only fitting that we get one of the best analysts and hardest workers in the sport. You know her from her phenomenal work on ESPN, Laura Sanko's contender, I mean, Dana White's contender series, <laughs> host of One on One, and most importantly, about to make history this weekend as she becomes the first female UFC commentator. Honestly, nobody more deserving. And who better to chat to than Laura Sanko? Laura, welcome back. How are you? Thank you. How does it feel yeah, to be you. days away from making history? It's amazing. It's amazing. I, I literally just landed in Vegas. I'm still in my car, just pulled up at the hotel. So it's been a bit of a, a whirlwind. But, um, you know, as, as new and exciting as all of this is, it's also just old hat because, you know, it's Colin fights is Colin fights. So I'm excited. My God. Well, again, like Casper said, um, we're so excited for you. I know everybody's super pumped about it. And, you know, this is the I'm, I'm hoping first of many, many times, which eventually leads you to Australia to uh, commentate some big fights. Yes. And that kind of brings me to a big fight that's happening next week that we wanted to break down with you. Of course, UFC 284 is a market chef and Alex Olkanovsky. And I just want to start with this elephant in the room and arguably the biggest question. How is either how is Alex Olkanovsky going to either stop the takedown or at least stop Islam from staying on top of him and implementing his insane top game? I honestly think that body mechanics are going to be a bigger factor in this fight than we we probably want to talk about. You know, we always talk about styles and stats and things like that, but I genuinely believe that Alex's build um, is a big point of discussion for this fight. And and when I say that. You know, level changing onto someone who is significantly shorter, sturdier. You know, he's a he is he's a unit, as you say. <laughs> uh, sorry, I had a call coming in. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Busy times, guys. Yeah, uh, so good. Uh, Islam, Islam's like just that is much shorter like that is is it's just a different look, and he's so incredibly strong for that weight class. And he said to me uh, when I interviewed him first when this was announced. He, he said, you know, people get. Hold on. Is this so is, is Islam Makachev? He's like, when is our interview going on, Laura? <laughs> She's like, I'm with Smish Radio. I'm busy. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, yeah, that he used to walk, you know, around 215 pounds. So this is a man who is used to having. Uh, very physical exchanges with people that size, let alone 155. So I don't, I genuinely don't think that the weight is going to be a major factor. But of course, Islam Makhachev, probably the greatest grappler in UFC history, perhaps yet to be determined, but that's the trajectory that he is on. I think more importantly is going to be Alex Volkanovsky's ability to get up. You know, I expect Islam to be able to get him down eventually because his chain wrestling is so incredibly good. But Alex... Man, I, I wouldn't want to try to have to control that guy on the ground. And we got to we got to forget, too, that although Islam, you know, is this incredible, incredible athlete and a guy that we can definitely see potentially being at the top of that division for a long time. If you go back a few fights, um, I believe it was Thiago Moises took him down. Mm. So. There are, he's human, I guess is my point. Um, so sometimes I think we, we make too much of someone uh, being perfect in the area of the sport at which they excel. Here's an interesting thought. I know a lot of people talk about the fact that there's a size difference and how Alex is smaller. But I, for me, I feel like with Alex, he's actually better fighting guys that are taller than him. We were yep. talking to Joe Lopez and they were talking about how in some ways his size is actually an advantage for Alex. Do you think that's something that that's something that people are actually kind of missing? For Alex, that's almost the sweet spot. Fighting yeah. a taller guy because of his footwork and his abilities actually ends up being almost better for him than fighting a shorter guy around his size. A hundred percent. And he has very long arms. It's his mm. arms are not necessarily proportionate to his height. So he's got a deceptively long reach for being a shorter guy, which really negates a lot of the the at least some of the reach that we are discussing and you know his ability to to close distance if he wants to is amazing his angles are incredible his speed in the pocket is incredible his mm. eyes in the pocket i mean he has a lot of attributes that i think people might be sleeping on because everybody's hung up on size and islam's dominance in the grappling i wonder like 
and again, we're, we're looking at this from the perspective of the underdog, right? That's always more interesting. So I am curious what you think Volko's sort of path to victory is in the sense that like, okay, grappling, he's probably not going to submit uh, Islam, right? He's probably not going mm. to outgrapple him for long periods of time in order to where it's, you know, dominant. Um, and then you look at the striking. All right, striking is his bread and butter. He's, he's better in the striking department. But then you think like, is he going to kick as much, right? Kicking is like a massive part of his game. Huge risk against Islam Makachev. So mm-hmm. is he going to have to essentially box for five rounds? And then there's like the finishes. He finished Korean Zombie with the standing TK after just battering him. And then before that was Chad Mendes. But Volk, like as of late, hasn't been known for that crushing one punch knockout power. So do you think it's a matter of like he either has to fight the perfect fight for five rounds or at least win three out of the five? And I'm, I'm curious. What do you think is his best best path to victory there? If he does have to somewhat box for for that period, yeah, I don't know that he has to fight the perfect fight. I think that that's that's a little bit of a stretch because I do I can see Alex winning rounds. I really can as long as as long as he can be really shifty laterally and and frustrate the attempts of Islam to get you know to get in on his hips or get in on his body. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna be able to point fight from. But for him is the outside. And and while you say he might have to box, I mean, leg kicking and body kicking, not necessarily advisable against Islam, but calf kicking. I mean, that's that's certainly on the table because difficult to turn them into a takedown. And we all know that he has a phenomenal calf kick. So I think there are opportunities to still use that part of his arsenal um, in this fight. I'm just excited for it. I think it's I, I'm genuinely, genuinely jazz <laughs> yeah, yeah throw out your jazz hands everybody we've got a big fight coming up there it is hey what about the mentality here because one of the things that i'm very curious about is you got these two champions right islam Akhachev, who's known for his tenacity and ability and just you know the fact that he comes in in this incredible shape but with alex Volkanovsky, what we've heard time and time again from people that have fought him is it's not you don't really know what you're in for until you stand in front of him Because Olkanovsky is one of these guys who loves to be in there. He loves to fight. And he comes in in such crazy shape that he's just going to keep going and going and and going no matter what happens the previous round, no matter what happens the following round. He's just a goer. He just doesn't stop. When you take these two guys and put them together, how do you think those two styles sort of mesh? And do you think there's a point there in the fight throughout those five rounds we see one guy get that upper hand over the other guy when it comes to sort of breaking them mentally or pace wise. Man, I think that they're they're very equally matched mentally and pace wise. Um, I, no one's going to knock the cardio of Alex Volkanovsky, um, and we, we don't really see Islam fade either. And particularly if Islam can get this into his world. Those guys can grapple for hours. I'm not even exaggerating. Mm. When you have that grappling cardio base, if you can keep the fight there for the majority of the time, I mean, it's literally something that they could do for hours. Um, But that being said, you know, I I really do feel like Alex has a particular mentality in this fight. And again, back to when this was first announced and I talked to him, I've never seen a a fire in his eyes like i did when he when he talked about this fight and he said to me point blank he said listen i love the the featherweight division i want to continue to to be on top of that division but the reality is i haven't felt uh i haven't felt danger in the last few of my matchups you know he put on a clinic last time so i really think that the all these X factors that we're talking about um, are not at all scary to him. They are, if anything, a huge motivation. And I really believe he's coming into this fight the most dialed in that we've ever seen him, which is crazy to think about because we're talking about the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Mm. And just looking at Islam, it's kind of crazy because Habib kind of revealed the blueprint months ago when they set up the fight, talking about how, Alex, you can basically train as much as you want in terms of wrestling. Go ahead. We're going to basically take this guy. We're going to beat him up in the clinch. He's going to eat a lot of knees. We're going to get him tired. They're going to take him down and submit him. I mean, if if that's not confidence, I don't know what is. Do you think, how, how accurate do you think that's going to be as far as what their actual blueprint and game plan is? Um, because I know a lot of people are talking takedowns, but I guess with Islam, like his judo is just a, a nightmare, oh. especially from the clinch. But then you got Alex who like, you know, he's very good at keeping away from the clinch. 
he is. And that was that was going to be my point is Alex. Alex is very good about when he closes distance, he never crashes. He closes with a purpose and he closes with a combination in mind. And then when, once he's done whatever he went there to do, he's back out of range and, you know, gone, essentially. His distance, his distance management is absolutely going to be key for him in this fight, because as you say, you know, that that really is where the true height of Islam could be. A significant advantage because when you get in those plump clinch situations and you can start wearing on a guy's head and it's just easier to land the knees against a shorter opponent um and alex's long arms don't matter when they're clenched up so i i mean i have no doubt that that is their game plan will it be that easy um that remains to be seen yeah it's fascinating because you got uh people like uh, craig jones working with alex Volkanovsky going into this fight and there's a difference between you know, a wrestling match and, and an, an MMA fight. And there's there's so many little sneaky tricks that you can learn from people like Craig Jones to get mm -hmm. out of tricky situations that people don't realize you could pick up without actually being a better wrestler or a grappler, being able to get out of those situations. So I'm fascinated to see some of the things that they're planning on that, with that. But let's, let's say, for argument's sake, Alex Volkanovsky is able to shut the doubters up and get it done next weekend, Laura. How yeah. big how big of a deal would it be if Alex is able to walk away with those two titles and get this done? Man, you know, we, we have a fair number of double champs at this point, but only Amanda Nunez to this date has successfully been able to go back and forth mm. between Bantamweight and Featherweight for her and actually be the queen of two divisions at the same time. It's such a unique and difficult, difficult prospect. But when you look at Alex, and if, it's a huge if, but if he's able to get past Islam, get this title, you, and you look at him and he's got the skills to rule both divisions for a, a lengthy period of time, which, I mean, to me, that would, that would cement him as one of the all-time greats, which he is already on the, well on the way to being anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and, and also like when you compare it to say like the Conor Eddie Alvarez fight, like. Obviously, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal performance. But I think we're talking about two different levels here, like the number one, yes. number two, pound for pound. Like it is just sometimes you get these fights and it's just like one A, one B. It's just insane. I, I want to yeah. get your thoughts on this. Is the pound for pound, I don't know, term, whatever you want to call it, invisible ranking. It, do you really feel like it's on the line? Because <clears throat> we're talking to Eugene Berriman here and like people might say, oh, well, you know, that's obviously going to be biased. But like. Pound for pound is kind of like, hey, it's it's all about the weight. And if this guy was this size, he would be a better fighter. Like if Islam fought Nganu, I mean, Nganu is probably going to win. But that doesn't mean that Nganu is the pound for pound better fighter. I would say Islam would be. So I'm curious how you see this one in terms of like, is it really for pound for pound number one? Or do you think it's a little bit more, you know, marketing in that sense? I mean, normally I think of the pound for pound rankings as being even more highly subjective than the sure. regular ranking which, you know, we can all debate those all day long. Mm. Um, but in this particular case, I mean, this is as close as you're going to get to real yeah. pound for pound supremacy because they are close enough in size where it's a legitimate comparison and they're quite literally fighting each other. So, yeah, to me, to me, this one has really does have a lot uh, of, of bearing when you talk about real pound for pound rankings and it would be much more of an objective number than many of the numbers in that list are when you, you know, as you say, you, it's really hard to compare flyweights to Francis. And, you know, they, I, I noticed that they took the women and made a separate pound for pound women's uh, ranking out, which I think they had mixed, had them intertwined earlier. I may be wrong about that, but yeah, it's a funky pound for pound is always kind of a funky list, but it's fun to think about. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred uh, percent. You know what else is fun to think about? your balls being the smoothest they've ever been in your life and your confidence just peaking through the roof. I'm talking about you having the number one pound for pound sack on the colder sack. And of course, our good friends at Manscaped are here to get you there with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0, the pound for pound greatest grooming tool in the world. You'll have the black belt in ball shaving thanks to its LED light, waterproof features, ceramic blade, wireless charging dock. Just get it done in the shower. Just toss it on that dock and then move on with your life. And the Performance Package 4.0 is the best value deal yet, including the Lawn Mower 4.0 Tremor, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Tremor, the Ultra Premium Body Wash, the Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, the Ultra Premium Deodorant, 
which will all having have you smelling phenomenal. Then there's the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Don't chafe those pound-for-pound pound balls. And the Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner to make sure that you're smelling phenomenal for a date, jiu-jitsu, or just everyday life. And you get free gifts, boxes, and the Shed Travel Bag. Phenomenal value, phenomenal gift for anybody, including yourself. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. Look, we're gearing up for Perth to cover this fight live, and that is perfect. Everything on that list is what we're going to be taking with us to make sure that we're sorted. And that shed travel bag is absolutely essential as you travel from place to place with all your Manscaped products. Great for everything else as well. Amazing bag too. And you guys can get 20% off and free shipping right now if you use the codes, code word submission now. Use code word submission and get ready with Manscaped today. Also, we're going to be traveling uh, on the on the way to Perth. We're going to be at airports. We're going to be in hotels. We're going to be at all sorts of places, all sorts of dodgy Wi-Fi's and all sorts of potentials for trackers and people to collect your data, steal your identity, your credit card details, all sorts of dodgy, nasty shit that we'd like you to avoid. Uh, if that's something that you would like to avoid as well, look no further than NordVPN, the greatest VPN in the world. Along with all those things, along with improving your security, you can change your computer geolocation with a touch of a button. You may be in Australia, but with one touch of a button, bam, you're in America or Germany or the UK or anywhere, which is phenomenal for when you watch when you want to watch that country's uh, TV shows or streaming services such as Netflix. Uh, you know, you can watch American Netflix, Canadian Netflix, whatever. Maybe there's some awesome show or dodgy sport streaming from a Russian stream, but only Russians can watch it. Bang, NordVPN, all of a sudden, you're watching whatever you want. Also, no buffering, no speed throttling. You watch everything that you want on any kind of website, spicy or not, in crystal clear 4K. Nothing better. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. And one of the cool things about it is there's a number of them, but one NordVPN account can actually be used up to six devices, which I know is something that... People have kind of been wondering about, yeah, that's right. So it's not a situation where you've got to create a new account if you want it across other devices. One of the best apps in the game. And you guys can try it risk-free for now with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. These guys aren't trying to hide anything from you. They want you to experience that smooth Nord VPN life today. And you guys can do it right now by going to nordvpn.com forward slash submission. Or you get a huge NordVPN plan discount plus a bonus gift right now if you do that. There's also the link in the description below. I mean, there's no better time to do it right now. Start off your year right thanks to NordVPN and secure yourself. Uh, really, I recommend everybody goes and tries it now with that 30-day money-back guarantee. But okay, Laura, last question here, Laura. I want to know, um, and obviously we spoke to Javier Mendez a couple of weeks ago, an incredible team there to help Islam uh, get this done against Alex, an incredibly big challenge for both guys. But Khabib not being there for this one. I mean, it's an interesting one because, you know, Islam has kind of traveled all, like across the world for this. There's a lot of variables here. The time that he's fighting, the crowd that he's fighting in front of. It's kind of like and a lot of it is he's fighting in front of Alex's sort of crowd in front of Alex's fans. How much of an effect do you think Khabib actually not being there on the night is going to have or not have potentially on this performance? Well, it's certainly not an advantage, all of the things that you just listed, but I really don't think it will have a huge impact on the fight. I think that Islam has the mentality. I think all of those guys that are cut from that Dagestani cloth have a particular level of focus. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with where they're from and how they were raised. And a lot of it, you know, Khabib has talked about this, a lot of it has to do with the discipline that's required for Islam as well. So the religion, I should say. Um, so when you when you take all those things into account, I just think X factors like not having could be physically there mean less. You know, he. I'm sure that they're going to talk on the phone. I'm sure they're going to FaceTime. He's got Javier. It, it, I, to me, I don't think it's as big of a deal as people might make it out to be, especially since he's going to be able to communicate with him and it, he's been a part of the planning process and the game planning coming into that. That's really the most important part. Mm. I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's arguably better, even though, like, I'm annoyed because I wish Khabib was coming to Australia. Like, that would just be great. His presence would be awesome. But at the same yeah. time, it's good because now it's like it's the Islam show. It's Islam's time. Yeah. Habib did his job in getting the fight over the line, so to speak, and then he's like, all right, I'm yeah. out. You do the rest. And there's there's not that, um, I wouldn't say distraction, but, like, you know, sometimes, like, people be talking to Islam. It's like, hey, Habib, this and that, Habib, this and that. And now it's, yeah. it's just all about Islam. It's his moment if he's able to get it done. Um, 
But I just realized, uh, I just realized that you're obviously sitting in your car. You're not moving. So we're going to let you go, Laura. Follow her at Laura underscore. So you want to get to your hotel room so you can get ready for this weekend. Catch her on commentary. Oh, my God. That guy's like, just end it, you sons of bitches. Catch her on commentary this weekend as she makes history on ESPN at UFC Fight Night. Lewis versus uh, Spivak. And, of course, catch her show one-on-one on YouTube. Laura, you are the best. You deserve nothing but the best. Thank you so much for taking your time and uh, chatting with us. Really appreciate it. And have an awesome time this weekend. Thank you. And thank you for always being big supporters and encouragers of me and my analysis. It really genuinely means a lot. You guys were certainly a, a big part of this journey. So thank you. 